How's it going everyone? Pakalak TCG here and today I'm going to be going over a super dope Shaman V-Star Arceus V-Star Umbreon VMAX deck. Now this list is drawn from inspiration from Evan C 2000 on Twitter. He ended up playing something similar to this at NEIC last year. The, of course rotation happens so there's a lot of changes that I ended up putting into the list in its entirety but relatively the base concept of the deck is still there from what it originally was. I believe Evan is also the person who ended up playing playing Greedent at a regionals or some like lost Greedent. So go check out his Twitter. He's a really cool guy. Seems to love to play fun decks like I do. So Shaman V-Star, let's take a look at it because let's not kid ourselves. Shaman V-Star has not seen the light of competitive play in its entirety being legal. So Shaman V-Star, 250 HP grass type, stage one, two prize or retreat of one, uh, revenge blast for a grass and a colorless, you 120 plus 40 for each prize card your opponent has taken. So you could essentially cap at 320 damage which is pretty cool four would get you at 280 which one shots most if not all pokemon two prizers i'd say the exs are a little more difficult that's where that kind of comes in it's like you could play cleansing gloves to watch our gardevoirs but in order to do gardevoir you also have Umbreon. Umbreon is a good pair for this deck, not only because, in general, Umbreon is a very good Pokemon due to the Dark Signal ability dragging out Pokemon, and then hit something for weakness, 160 damage base, 320 ends up knocking out the Gardevoirs, which is really, really cool. Arceus, of course, is the main engine being able to uh, accelerate the energies and so should I friend two cards. There were similar cards in here. Uh, he ended up playing Radiant Halucha. I put in regular Halucha instead of the Zigzagoon and Radiant Alakazam because times have changed. Uh, it also allows you to hit 220 on Pokemon uh, Vs. Um, the rest of the deck is pretty is a pretty standard RCS deck. One switch, one rope, one super rod. This all not the he ended up playing ordinary rod on his list i still like the fact that rod is going to be in here not only does it help against lost box because they can't echo horn play you at all but it allows you to be a little more aggressive with your energies play triple copies of lost city lost city is just very good in a deck like this um they did play triple collapse i believe that was primarily for reggie's don't quote me but lost city being in here allows you to lost zone pokemon almost immediately to discovery Two boss, four Iono, one judge, two research, one Raihan. Adventure Discovery is very good just to set up your entire board. Um, <clears throat> and then two choice belts, four DTE, two V Guard, two Dark, and a Grass. In hindsight, you probably could drop a Grass for another Dark. So you could go four, three, but adding an, a 14th energy, I'd like to think that the bare minimum for RC's decks could be 14 energy. So you could end up also adding a third Dark energy, but I do like the concept of a V Guard energy, allowing your Shaman to have 280 HP to survive uh, Dragonite. So let's get into some games to show off kind of what Arc Shaman can do. All right, so we start Shaman, our opponent starts Arceus, they go DTE pass, we, in our turn, our hand is pretty good, we Ultra Ball Palpat and Umbreon, and from here, I'm looking, our hand is just really, really good, DTE plus switch, access to Arceus is insane, we end up getting the Shaman immediately too, and Luminion is going to end up grabbing a supporter card here to conclude the turn, and from here, I'm thinking, I could grab Research here, grab a fresh Sand of 7, but Adventurous Discovery makes sense to me because I don't see them knocking out the Arceus at all. And if they do, I'm going to bench another one and then use Starbirth from there. And here I use Trinity Charge on my first turn, attaching one to both Shamans and an Arceus on the bench. Uh, this, this allows me to go DT on the Arceus or V-Guard to both Shamans. It also allows me to go V-Guard in the active in case I do end up hitting that accessibility. Um, our opponent's going to Ultra Ball, discarding Curlia and Switch, and at this point, I kind of figured it was Reggie Drago, because it's one of the only Arceus builds that ends up playing uh, the Ralts Curlia engine. Um, other than, like, Arceus Glade, but that deck hasn't seen the light of day. Our opponent's going to Iono us out of our only <laughs> Arceus V-Star as of right now. Uh, and then they end up going double turbo, nest ball for the Ralts, Temple of Sinnoh, and then Trinity Charge, which was a little bit annoying because as you can see from the hand, we actually had the knockout on the Reggie Drago until the Temple of Sinnoh came into play. Because what we needed to do, we needed to Ultra Ball for the RCS V Star, search our decks for the Choice Belt plus Halucha, and then we have Boss. Now we gotta search for the replacement stadium instead which then in turn makes us short in damage to knock out the Reggie Drago. So from here, I'm debating on what to even do, if I even grab anything. 
um, off the Starbirth, really. But we do have Adventurous Discovery, which has up an entire board, and I benched that at Umbreon, and let me say, that is going to be a misplay along the lines, which you'll see here. Adventure Discovery gets us pretty much all of our Pokemon out of our deck, and I go Starbirth, and really the only card I wanted out of here was a Lost City. Um, I already had research in hand, so I was just kind of debating and running through my options. I was like, is there anything really that needs to be grabbed here? I uh, debated a V-Guard Energy, which I ended up grabbing because V-Guard is pretty good. Uh, attaching it to our Shaman, uh, just preventing plays for Reggie Drago. Um, with Rolling Iron plus Bell, Halucha shenanigans, like, I, I really didn't know what to expect off of, like, Defiant BN plays or what my opponent was. And then I saw the Garchomp, and I was like, okay, the V-Guard was correct, because they could go Defiant Band, knock out, uh, Shaman V-Stars when they're in the active with the Garchomp. Uh, they ended up going Escape Rope here, which was okay. Um, I, they ended up using Researcher, just cutting a couple energies, and from here I'm just kind of thinking, oh, they could get the, they could get the Regidrago V-Star and just knock out, uh, Umbreon or Luminion, which would suck, but it was okay. Uh, they bench another Ralts, and then they Dragon Laser, which will do 30 damage to a Shaman, which will be now in range for Garchomp. Uh, from here I just go V-Guard, and I was hoping to hit the Choice Vault, but I ended up missing, and from here you can kind of see where I'm like, man, if that bench slot was an Alakazam, I actually had the knockout. <laughs> So, there was the misplay, was benching the Umbreon, but I felt like we needed a Gusting effect at some point in the game, just because Gusting out of Gudra is extremely important in this matchup, especially being an opposing Arceus player. Our opponent ends up getting the Arceus V-Star, which does mean we're probably going to end up losing a Pokemon here. They use Refinement, uh, getting rid of Noivern, and then they end up going into a Starbirth, which the Starbirth will be able to search a deck for any two cards they want. One of which is probably going to be the Regidrago V-Star, because Regidrago V-Star's whole lore is the Apex Dragon Attack, which copies Dragon Pokemon from the discard pile. Um, this means it can copy Garchomp, Noivern, really anything that comes onto mind. Um, so they, I think they ended up searching their deck for the Arceus V-Star or the Path. Um, the Path doesn't really do anything for us at this point. Uh, it's pretty early to do it. And then they end up using Apex Dragon, and they copied Covert Flight of all attacks. You could kind of see me be like, why Covert Flight? That doesn't do anything. You could have Sonic Strike to the Shaman, could have used Dominating Echo to lock the path. And now I'm going to punish them. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the Stadium, go Ultra Ball, discard Nest Ball, and Arceus, and grab Umbreon and take out their Arceus. And I bet you're wondering why I was doing this instead of actually taking out the threat. It's because... The Regidrago is already heavily damaged, so that's going to get knocked out at any point in the game. That Arceus, they're already down three double turbo energy, so it's a lot harder for them to set that back up, and they cannot set up a fresh Regidrago going into um, future turns. So taking out the Arceus made a lot of sense to me to just immediately take out an energy recovering Pokemon, um, while we're probably going to be trading two for two on prize cards anyway and i wanted them to take prize cards so that shaman late game could just end up rolling through their entire deck uh they end up using judge getting rid of our hand and capturing aroma hitting tails not really going to get them anything there important and then they end up using apex dragon and from here i'm like they've got to use dominating echo and they end up using garchomp which was another play where i was like okay if they use garchomp here and i knock out the rcs v star then they can't recurse their energies so i touch the v guard to the shaman and then use raihan onto the umbreon so they can't just boss it and stall it it also allows me to go 190 with the choice belt not really relevant math in the end but it was an idea in the beginning, and you can kind of see me count uh, Revenge Blast. I'm like, I'm just going to bait this knockout on this Arceus. They're going to take the knockout with a bench one if they do find double turbo. If they do not, and they end up going with Shaman, I'm just going to attack them, and then the game's pretty much over. So I'm essentially setting up Checkmate, saying if you cannot take care of the Shaman or play down a V-Guard energy or something for Shaman not to take the knockout, I will um, just take you out. So I take out the Regidrago V-Star. And they end up promoting the Arceus, and at this point, like, you can see me counting, I'm like, they've, they're already down three double turbos, there's no way they find it. And they found the double turbo, they use a super rod to put back the energy, and you can kind of see me like, yeah, I've, I mean, I've got the shaman. I'm just, like, making sure my math is correct. I'm like, 4, 8, 12, 16, uh, if they end up taking four prize cards, the choice ball makes it three ten, which is insane. Um, the research over the Iono is kind of insane, too. 
Like, I don't think it mattered in the long run. Just if they could not knock out a Shaman V Star, the game was pretty much over. I think I think the game was pretty much over a couple turns ago when I got the first attack. Um, they're gonna super rod and then they're gonna use the second super rod, put back all of their cards, and then they end up using Trinity Nova, taking the knockout here. And all I need to do is promote the Shaman V Star, use Revenge Blast for 310 damage. And there we go, the Shaman V-Star Arceus Umbreon deck in its full force. I thank everyone for watching. Please subscribe and like for more content. If you would like to see a specific deck, hit this channel. Please drop it in the comments section below and I'll work on it. Until then, see everyone later. I just want, I just want.